Hey, what's going on guys? This is Brown with Superman's Comics in collaboration with comicbookinvest.com. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my weekly picks for new comics that are coming out Wednesday, July 17th, 2019. Now this week is normally a pretty slow week because it is San Diego Comic-Con week. So they usually don't have that many titles releasing or that many good ones. But in my opinion, there are some great titles coming out. So let's get into the picks. We're gonna kick this week off with Trout, Hollowest Knot number two. I enjoyed the first issue. I'm gonna keep picking this up for now. This to me kind of looks like it's got great adaptability. Whether it's a movie or TV show, TV series, while reading this comic, it kind of reminds me of the movie Box Trolls. The story isn't nowhere near it, but I see that kind of animation style towards it. And that's why I like picking this book up. Next up, we have Batman number 75 from DC Comics. This is gonna begin the end of Tom King's run. This is the beginning of the run that it promises will change the Dark Knight forever. Tom King's been hit or miss on his Batman run. Some people like it, some people hate it. I've enjoyed it, but it hasn't been the best, but I'm hoping this last run goes out with the bang, so we'll have to wait and see. This is gonna have a regular cover by Tony S. Daniel. It's also gonna have You're the Villain covers by Gabrielle Del Otto. Next up, we have Collapser number one. This comes from the Young Animal imprint, which is headed up by Gerard Way. This looks like a fantastic series. I know the Young Animal imprint hasn't had a lasting effect, especially on the speculation market, but there has been some great stories. I really love Mother Panic from the Young Animal imprint, but Collapser, it's about a guy who has a voice in his head, and he suffers from anxiety, but then he receives a black hole in the mail. It gets imprinted in his chest. Next thing you know, he has insane superpowers and he becomes a celebrity overnight and gets drawn into one giant cosmic conflict. That alone, I'm definitely picking up at least through the first few issues. Justice League 28. This is leading us to a new Justice and Legion of Doom War. It's gonna have a regular cover by Jim Chong and a regular priced variant by Terry and Rachel Dodson. Teen Titans number 32. Lobo has Crush and Crush thinks it's the perfect opportunity to ask him about the identity of her mother. This is gonna have a regular cover by Giuseppe Comincoli as well as a regular priced variant by Alex Garner. I've been picking up the Garner variants, love those the most, think they're gonna make a great set when it's all completed. So I'm gonna keep going with that cover. Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, that's right, this series makes its return, but I don't see this doing that much, especially since it's a mini series, but there is a reason why I have it in this video. There's two covers for it, regular cover by Steve Lieber, but what I really like on this is the regular price variant by Ben Oliver. Love the art on it, so that's why I'm picking it up. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, number seven. Dynamite's famous for having a lot of covers, but there's only one cover I'm liking on this, and that is the Incentive Virgin variant by Lucio Perillo. Perillo has a huge following, I don't see this comic doing that much, but if you are a Perio collector, this is one cover that you probably want in your collection. So that's why I have it in this video. Vampirello Magazine number one. This is a replica edition of the 1969 Vampirella number one. Original is really expensive, so it's hard for a lot of people to add to the collection, but here's a great opportunity. It's a replica, but it's still an iconic cover by Frazetta, and it's one that you can get at a cheap price. So I would recommend, if you want it, to pick it up. Next, we have Vampirella number one. This is celebrating This is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Vampirella. As Dynamite usually does, there are a bunch of different covers for this. So instead of sitting here talking about every cover, I'm just gonna show them all on the screen right now for you to see for yourself. So there you have it, those are all the covers for it. I have a couple favorites, one being the Joe Jusco. Really love that cover. Always a fan of Alex Ross, so I like that cover as well. But my favorite out of all of them is that one in 100 incentive, the Frank Fazetta art. If I can get that, especially for cheap, I'll definitely be adding that to my collection. Next, we have Ghost Tree number four from IDW. This is another one that has a fantastic story. People are starting to catch on to it. Previous issues have already gone back to multiple printings, so this is definitely one 
Might want to be adding to your collection because the story is just that good. And speaking of great story, one of my favorite books to read right now is Road of Bones. This week we get Road of Bones number three, post-World War II, Escape from a Siberian Gulag, and, well, I'm not going to tell you what the and part is, but there's some supernatural type stuff that takes place as well. So I'm suggesting you guys pick it up to find out what that's all about. Definitely one of my favorite reads. Always in my pull list. Can't wait to read this issue. Transformers Ghostbusters number two. In this issue, they find out that although Transformers can take the disguise of a vehicle, one has taken the disguise of Ecto-1, which gives us Ectotron. So this is going to have three different covers for it. There's a regular cover. There's a regular price variant and there's a one in 10 incentive for it. Next this week, we have the mini series finale of Little Bird and Little Bird number five. If you haven't been reading this story, there's another one I highly recommend you do. Now it's not super easy to read, but for me, I've had read a couple issues multiple times, but I have enjoyed it. And this is gonna be the mini series finale for it. So definitely gonna add that so I can complete the run. Next, we have Sonata number two. When the first issue came out, it slowly built steam. A lot of people are high on it right now. I enjoyed the first issue, but it wasn't like, ooh, I gotta have it. I went back and read it again, and it kind of builds on you. So I'm definitely looking forward to picking up issue number two. This is gonna have two different covers for it. There's a regular cover, and there's a regular price variant. Both of them are from Brian Haberlin and Gerard Van Dyke. Next up, we have Captain Marvel number eight. This is gonna be a hot issue this week. There's rumor of cameo, at least a cameo of new villain appearing. It's gonna have three different covers for it. There's a regular Amanda Connor cover. There's an awesome looking Carnageized variant by Nhyak Lee, but what you want to get and what everyone's hunting for right now is the 1 in 25 incentive variant. But definitely, this is going to be the book that a lot of people are hunting for on New Comic Book Day this week, so make sure you keep an eye out for it. Next, we have Daredevil number 8. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it, but if you're not reading this series, you definitely need to start picking it up. Daredevil number 8. My favorite comic to read from Marvel. It's going to have a regular cover and a regular price carnageized variant by Lee Garbett. Moral Hulk number 21. Some of the FOMO has seemed to die down in this series. I still enjoy reading it. Al Ewing has done fantastic at writing. Still love those Alex Ross covers. So I'm going to be adding issue 21 to my collection. It looks like there is only one cover for this issue, so that's very surprising. Next, we have Loki number one. This picks up right after War of the Realms. If you read War of the Realms, you know at first you thought Loki died, got eaten by his father, but at the end, he ends up killing his father and becomes King of the Frost Giants. This is gonna pick up from there. It's got four different covers for it. There's a regular cover. There's a regular price Carnageized variant by Will Sliney. There's a one in 25 incentive variant by Emanuela Lupacino, as well as a one in 50 variant by Raphael Albuquerque. I don't see this series having a large print run. Number one issue will have a larger one than normal, sure. But I think that one in 50 variant might be one to pick up, especially if you can find it under ratio. Plus Loki does have that show coming to Disney Plus. So either way, if you can get that ratio, and it's a fabulous cover by Raphael Albuquerque, but if you find it under ratio especially, definitely pick it up because you never know what, the way comics have been going lately and certain covers just taking off or comics taking off for what seems like almost no freaking apparent reason, this is one that I would put in my collection and you never know what might happen. Spider-Man City at War number five. This book is pretty much an adaptation of the PlayStation 4 video game. There's got three different covers for it. There's a regular cover, but what I really like on this is there's an eight bit video game cover, similar to that Deadpool eight bit variant that came out a few years ago. But the good thing about this one is it's a regular price variant. So I definitely picked that up. There's also an incentive variant for it by David Nakayama. Great cover, really like that, but if I can only get one of them, I'm definitely picking up that 8-bit variant because that's just got nostalgia written all over it. Next, we have Silver Surfer Black number two, written by the Midas Touch himself, Donny Cates. This is gonna have three different covers for it as well. There's a regular cover by Trad Moore. There's a regular price variant by Ron Lim, as well as a gorgeous one in 25 incentive variant by Marcus Martin. So if I were to pick up any of them, I'd probably go for that one in 25, especially since you don't know what Donny Cates is gonna put in his story, whether it's gonna retcon back to something else, but he's known for garnering attention, especially with new characters, or bringing up past characters and creating a whole bunch of FOMO within the comic community. So definitely pick up Silver Surfer Black, and if you can, get that one in 25 incentive variant. Next up, we have Faithless number four. This comes from Boom Studios. We've talked about it on this channel before. We've talked about it in our interview with the VP of Marketing from Boom, Arun Singh, but this series, it kind of goes there. I mean, it's, it's R-rated, borderline, borderline NC-17, but it is a great series and it's done and with class. This is gonna have three different covers for it. 
There's a regular cover. There's a regular price David Rubin variant, but the one I like for this is the erotica variant. This one in particular is done by Jenny Friesen, who's probably one of the hottest artists in comics. So definitely gonna be picking that up. Here from Archie Comics, we have Jughead Time Police number two. Now there's multiple covers for this, but the one that caught my eye is this awesome Back to the Future homage cover. That's the only reason why I have in this video. I haven't even, I didn't even read issue number one, but love Archie Comics, love 80s, love Back to the Future. So I'm definitely gonna pick this comic up and add it to my collection. Resident number one is from Bulk Comics. So here we have a father and his sons in an apocalyptic type tale. The father leaves their safe haven, going out to search for medicine that the youngest son needs. They become separated and the story takes place of them trying to re get reunited in an apocalyptic environment. Sounds like a great read and this is gonna have two covers for it. There's a regular cover by Alejandro Aragon, as well as a Vault Vintage Homage variant by Nathan Gooden and Tim Daniel. Also from Vault this week, we have Sarah and the Royal Stars number one. This looks like another great story. It's gonna have three different covers for it. There's a regular Audrey Mott cover. There's also a regular price Vault Vintage Homage to their own book, Heathen, as well as a Vault Vintage Homage variant to Supergirl. All three of those covers look great. Not sure which one I'll pick up, but there's also a comicbookinvest.com exclusive variant limited to 250 copies, and it's available on comicbookinvest.com right now. And there's a link in the description of this video, so make sure you check that out. Next, we have X Liefeld's number one. This comes from Keen Spot Comics. It's a parody on Rob Liefeld himself, as you can imagine. And it's gonna have six different covers for it. There's a regular cover, there's a regular price Sam Beck variant, a regular price Kent variant, a regular price Chris Kempel variant, a regular price Blank variant, as well as an incentive variant by Rob Pachak. So there you have it. Those are my picks for new comic books that are coming out Wednesday, July 17th, 2019. As always, comment down below. Let me know what books you guys are picking up. And if you haven't done so already and you like comics and pop culture related content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell notification so that way you'll always be notified when a new video is released. Question of the day. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? This is Brian with Superman's Comics in collaboration with comicbookinvest.com and I'll see you guys next week.